we will not be getting any more bags. Now this is how Tesla Autopilot and the FSD Beta should be experienced. Hey y'all, welcome back. Kevin Smith here with more Tesla FSD Beta. Today, oh, uh, there's another nag. I mean, I have about 100,000 miles on autopilot and FSD Beta. At this point, I don't need to be nagged on how to drive responsibly with the product that I paid for. Are you tired of it? I am. So I'm looking for a solution. Fortunately, Omar delivered. We have Mars mode. For this, we're gonna need, well, there's another nag. Hang on. All right. So what we're gonna need is a comma panda, a white comma panda, a raspberry Pi three or four, and some USB cables and a micro SD card. So I started with a brand new SD card and I headed over to raspberrypi.com. Click on software. There's another nag, sorry. Click on software and we're gonna want the Raspberry Pi OS. Scroll down. Scroll down, then you can have the imager download. Open that up, and they'll want. Oh, sorry, there's another nag. Open that up, and they're going to need an operating system and a storage device. So, an operating system, if you go under other, I like to use the 64 bit light image. Back in storage, I'm going to select my 32 gig memory card. And then before I click right, oh, sorry, another nag, hang on. Okay, so before I click right, I'm going to go to the very bottom right and click that settings icon. Under here, I want to set up a default user. I want to set, enable SSH. I want to give it a host name. And then add a wireless. That way, when the car is, the Raspberry Pi is either in the car near the house. Oops, sorry, another nag. The Raspberry Pi is either uh, near the house in the car, or if I take the Raspberry Pi inside and plug it in anywhere, then it's going to auto join the Wi Fi and I can access it from my laptop or iPad. It's really convenient. So once you do that, head on back over and click right. It's going to confirm that that's the device you want to overwrite because you will lose anything that's on there. And then you just, oh, sorry, another nag. All right, now you just go back and click right, and then you just have to wait. When it's done, it'll let you know. Pop it on out of there, and you're ready to go. So for the next steps, we're gonna head on over to the comma AI Panda GitHub page. So that's github.com slash comma AI slash Panda. And if you scroll down, you'll get the instructions. So we'll start things off and we're just gonna install our dependencies. Another nag real quick. Install our dependencies. Uh, I'm just gonna add two more to this list. Uh, the first one is scons, S-C-O-N-S. And the second one is screen. We'll cover both of those shortly. Once you do that, That'll take a few minutes. Uh, then we're gonna clone the GitHub repository for the Panda. And then hop on in that folder. We'll install the requirements. And I had to add a sudo for the next line, install the libraries. Once that is installed, we'll scroll down and then we'll need to set up the device under the UDEV configuration for the device. Oh, hang on, another mag. Yeah, yeah, I touched it. So we add these lines to the UDEV device and do a refresh there, just as listed. 
And now we should be ready uh, to start working with our Panda device. Now, this is where most people get tripped up. By default, for safety reasons, obviously, all Panda firmware, uh, both on the devices when they ship and also any you can download, uh, have writing disabled. So you'll have to build your own firmware if you'd like to enable writing the CAN bus. No problem, that's why we installed SCON. So hop on in the board folder and type SCONS dash U. Here's another nag for us. It's gonna take a few minutes to build that, and when it's done, you'll have firmware ready to flash. Now it just tells you to run uh, either recover or flash.py. Uh, I get an error when I run this, um, but I just create a shortcut, a symbolic link uh, in the folder it, where it wants uh, to the build folder where we just built into. Uh, once you do that, then we can run the recover. And now you'll see that that takes a minute, but you'll see that the device is now flashing and ready for <laughs> flashing the green LED and ready for flash. So we'll run the flash. And now you have a device that is ready for use with writing enabled. But it has the ability to have writing enabled. You still have to send the safety unlock command after power on in order to unlock writing. Another nag. All right, so we got that. Now we got unlocking, so how do we use it? Well, we're gonna create a source file, a Python script, and we're gonna call it Mars Mode Media Volume Basic .py. Put that in your home folder. So this is gonna have our basic imports at the top. Then we create our Panda connection. And now we got a nag. All right, we're gonna create our Panda connection, set the baud rate, the speed, unlock it, that's that all output. And then all we gotta do is create a loop where we just send a volume down, volume up, and then we wait four to eight seconds. That's really all there is to it. Now we need to create a startup file, rc.local, add to it. So, oh, there's a nag. In this file, we gotta add this screen command. It's gonna run our Python script in the background after we power it on. If you name your script differently, just change it right here. Once you write this out, now we're gonna go ahead and shut down the system and head on to the car. And that's kind of where we are. Oh, here's a nag. So now we're riding along, we're in the car, and we've got our Panda plugged into our adapter that's plugged into the car. And now all we gotta do is plug our Raspberry Pi into the power. Yep, there's a nag. Yeah, I hear a nag. We did our touching. Just do the right ones. Alright, so at this time, I'm gonna plug in the Raspberry Pi. It's going to take a little bit for it to boot up and then once it does it's going to run our script and our script simply oh there's a nag our simply does a volume down and then a volume up there's the first one it's going to wait between four to eight seconds and it's going to do it again there it is it's going to do that every four to eight seconds until we unplug it and we will not be getting any more nags. Now this is how Tesla Autopilot and FSD Beta should be experienced. I'm still responsible. I'm still here to take over if there's any need. I can take care of anything that's going on. But I'm not being nagged to tug on the wheel every, every so often. No reason for that. I have a camera that's monitoring me. I'm paying attention. If there's any reason that it thinks there's a bigger concern, then it will do a safety alert. There's no cause for that. I can just relax, monitor the environment, pay attention, and use responsibly. Sit back, relax, and enjoy Mars mode.